understanding of Hardy Weinberg. Um, just in order to review the Hardy Weinberg lab that we did in class, um, we looked at two uh, different scenarios, and all of it was to look at this and kind of get an understanding of this equation right here and what these actually mean. So first, let's start with our big picture, which is why we use Harding-Weinberg. And the reason we use uh, Harding-Weinberg is to look at populations. Um, so we are looking at not individuals, we are looking at entire populations. And when we look at these populations, we want to look at what we call the allele frequencies, how much of each allele um, there is within a population. Because what we want to do is we want to compare before and after, uh, either an amount of time um, or a certain event. Um, uh, because we want to see, do these allele frequencies change? Do these allele frequencies actually change? So P represents our dominant allele, Q represents our recessive allele, and we want to look at, um, at if those numbers change. Now, in our lab, there were some rules that we needed to establish for these Hardy-Weinberg, uh, for our Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So if a population is in equilibrium, we say it's not evolving. So if the numbers before and after the event or the given time are the same, then we're not seeing any change in those allele frequencies. The population is not evolving. If we do see a change, then we can say that the population has experienced some kind of shift in those numbers. So in our lab, when we did this, we looked at, um, we needed to establish some uh, guiding principles, if you were, or think of them like this. Um, and there are five of them that we are going to uh, look at and kind of do a catch-all for some of the other um, minute events that could affect the allele frequencies. So again, when we're doing these Hardy-Weinberg, when we want to see whether or not a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we're looking at those frequencies. We're asking ourselves, does the event, or what we call the factor, affect the allele frequencies? So we want to ask ourselves, does the factor affect the allele frequencies? If it does affect the allele frequencies, either the dominant or the recessive frequencies, then we say that that population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So if that factor changes these numbers before and after, then we would say that they're not in equilibrium. So here are the rules. for those Hardy-Weinberg factors. We want to make sure that in order to see if something is in true equilibrium, um, we've got to kind of disc we've got to, we got to make sure that the following don't happen, which is what we try to simulate in our lab. Well, as much as humanly possible. Number one, the first thing um, that we need to establish is random mating. Okay, so if a population is to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, that is to say that the frequencies, the allele frequencies are not going to be affected, it has to be random mating. You can't have any um, sexual selection um, or preference going on, um, otherwise you go out of equilibrium. Number two, no migration. So this is, um, in order for our population to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, you can have individuals leaving in the middle of uh, our simulated lab, and we also did not have individuals coming in in the middle of our lab. Number three, no mutations. Number four, hold on, I've got to turn off my attendance alarm. 
So again, mutations will change whether or not your population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So um, in order for this population to actually be in equilibrium, there can't be any mu mutations going on. Number four, no natural selection. Again, you can't have any particular alleles um, that are favored over another, otherwise you're out of equilibrium. And then number five, you have to have a large population. And this large population is just try to minimize genetic drift. Uh, genetic drift will affect smaller populations. And we saw this a little bit in our lab when our numbers were uh, before and after our simulation. They were close. They were different, but they were still somewhat close. And that's because of the randomness of the mating and, um, and the simulation that we did. So with large population, what that does is to minimize genetic drift. Minimize genetic drift. It's important to note that this, this does not happen very often in nature. And so what we can take from this is because many populations violate one or many of these rules, they typically are not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and there's going to be a shift in those frequency of alleles. So many times students want to know, like, hey, that's a lot of rules. How am I going to remember that? A mnemonic device that students, uh, a student came up with uh, many years ago is looking at key uh, phrases within each rule, um, and she came up with this. Ma, me, mu, na, po. Ma, me, mu, na, po. So random mating, no migration, no mutations, no natural selections, and a large population size. So those are the, that's the conceptual understanding of Hardy-Weinberg.